Hello, and welcome back to Epic Quests. My name is Topaz, and you may notice that I am not, in fact, the usual voice of this channel, who was Lock Rules, aka Conrad. And by usual, I mean the voice of Epic Quests up until around 2016, when commentated videos on this channel petered out. A lot has changed since then, and I'm going to do my best to update you all on what's happened, and what the current situation is now. I'll then show off the three maps we've released this year, along with our plans for the future. So, let us wind back time to the summer of 2016. Empire War, the Lord of the Rings PvP server that Epic Quest was effectively the brother of, had shut down. I mean, we attempted to go it alone, but without our main source of players and income, we also shut down in around November 2016. Anyway, by 2017, Empire War was back up, and Epic Quest was similarly revived in August 2017. We plonked along as Empire Wars build server for a few years without much creative independence. That was all until a momentous moment in our history, when Epic Quest finally split off from Empire War in December 2018 to a full independent server with independent management. And that brings us up to today, in fact. Um, so the, uh, the last question is, of course, what happens to lock rules? Well, after the server went down in 2016, lock effectively decided to go his own way in life and leave server management to me, Toppers, and my co-creator, Gellek. Now, um, creator is the... it's effectively the main administrative rank on Epic Quests. Since our splitting off in late 2018, Epic Quests has released uh, three maps, as I mentioned earlier, and we've re reached new heights, really. Um, the number of maps we released this year is, I think, a record since around 2015. Um, and the last map we released before uh, 2019 was Ruined Isengard way back in 2016. So uh, those three maps were Etherlond, Eoford and Helm's Deep. I'm going to show you around them briefly now in case you haven't seen them already. Although I say that um, we have also released cinematics for all three of those. This is another map I'm at right now which is in development. I'll come back to this last. So first of all, let's head over to Etherlond. So yeah, um, this map, along with all our other maps, can be downloaded from our website or our Planet Minecraft. The links will all be in the description, um, as I'm sure you've come to expect. So this was effectively um, a big bit of a watershed map, in my view. Uh, there are lots of things we, I personally do different, and we as a team do different if we were to do it again today. But um, it was completed, I believe, around mid-2018. But it was such a big step up from our previous maps. Um, it's, as I say, it's it's a sort of stepping stone to where we are now, I suppose. It's, uh, I believe, the biggest city we built up until this point, although um, even further in development, we're working on something even bigger as it is now. So yeah, um, Lime Fox, one of our designers, did a brilliant cinematic for this, which you should check out, and I'll link around now in the video. He was, um, he was the project leader of this project and built this um, awesome palace at the top, and the field, <laughs> looking back, the fields um, are pretty good, but as I say, I do them slightly differently now. It was um, a major step, this project, and I'm still very proud of it. Anyway, um, the terrain is not extensive. We were half thinking about integrating this into more terrain in the future. We'll have a look at that, but um, we sort of reorientated ourselves towards the Rohan project at this point, which... Um, it's, it's a sort of, I'll explain more about that later, it's a, a large collection of projects with the main aim effectively being to create all of Rohan in a single contiguous map. So that includes Helm's Deep, uh, Edoras, Oldberg, Dunharrow, etc, etc, all in one map for download. So it's quite a big project, but um, it's proceeding pretty well, actually. So um, the second map we released was Aeoford. Which, um, all it is, is a small village set in Rohan, which was, in my view, a test for the, the future Rohan project. Because at this time, we hadn't really set our minds on it, and this was, this was basically a live test of Rohan styles, the terrain, etc, etc. The terrain is really awesome. It was built by another one of our current designers, um, Eno Shade. He made it in World Painter and World Machine. So all, all the houses, all 
one thing you should know for all our maps uh we fully interior everything um <laughs> there's nothing i can't stand more people who build maps and don't create it for the sort of player who's walking around looking around and they don't make interiors which in my view is a great shame so yeah we always ensure we make interiors we've got some really awesome interior builders on the server in fact so um this aoford isn't actually a law location in rohan but the thing is when you're trying to create an entire fictional kingdom you can't exactly just rely on locations tolkien named because I mean, he didn't name much in Rohan, to be quite frank. Um, so we have to effectively invent places. Um, we follow Tolkien's naming schemes. So Eoford is named like this because Tolkien basically um, based Rohan off Anglo-Saxon ideals, and he used their language and um, their way of life. So Eoford is based off his naming scheme, his Anglo-Saxon naming scheme. So this project was led by the Ferris Cat, and he also led the next project, which was Helm's Deep. Now, of course, we have, uh, we had before this a very popular pre-existing Helm's Deep, released, I believe, sometime around 2013, 2014. It's quite, really quite old, maybe even older. Um, and while it was iconic to many, and was probably the most down, one of the most downloaded downloaded Helm's Deeps on the internet, it frankly wasn't very accurate to the movies or the books. So this version of Helm's Deep is far more accurate to the movies. Um, Kat used uh, actual plans from the movies from Weta Workshop to help design it. Obviously it's not an exact replica of that, there are some design choices which... But basically you need to compromise when you're making a map like this, but I think it's really awesome. It looks really good. Terrain was made by Eno Shade, and um, it was a map on Empire War, as as were many of our maps. So this is the keep. Um, obviously, it's it's on a much smaller scale than uh, than the old Helm's Deep, but it's more accurate and, in my view, far far superior. So now we head into the glittering caves which are very different, and um, more based off the books than the movies in this, this case. But um, I think I prefer these to um, the old caves as well, because they're <laughs> you can easily get lost in them, which is exactly how Tolkien described it. I mean, just look at all these tunnels, so I'm already lost, to be honest. So I don't know if I'm even going to try and get out. Oh, no, here we are. So the final location I'm going to show off today is where we started, which is um, a sort of fortress town called Grimslade. Now, Grimslade is also a part of the Rohan project, like Helm's Deep and Aoford. It is a named location, and it's our latest map. It's very, very almost complete. We're just working on the fields, as you can see, but um, it's it's an example of how we're effectively continuously improving. Um, the terrain isn't quite done yet. It was built in a world machine and still needs some in-game tweaks by no shade, of course. I think I'm really proud of all of Epic Quest for working on this. The interiors are awesome and they're all fully interiored, as you'd expect. And the terrain is awesome. The fields are the most realistic fields we've done yet. So they, they follow the medieval field system of one field for fallow, one field for sort of wheat, cereal and one field for something like potatoes or parsnips or something similar to those so yeah and um geographically the aim with rohan is to make it as re realistic according to geography as we can so this is um a wash basically and it makes sense uh, hopefully i won't be criticized by all you sort of ge geographers and geologists but yes and at the top we have grim's hall it's grim slade so um, it's his place, built by Lime Fox, and and he has a uh, he has his um, sort of family's rooms up here, which are all of course very well done. So that's where we are now, effectively. The question is where we're going in the future. Um, we'll of course continue on with the Rohan project, 
uh, it would be crazy not to. Um, it's progressing really well, and we're working on a completely unified terrain map, which will help speed the project along quite a lot. Um, we're also working on some non-Rohan projects. It's nice to have some variety. Uh, I can't talk about them just yet because everything's a bit vague, but we might be doing some locations in Gondor or Mordor, um, hopefully up to our current standard. There's um, <laughs> obviously Epic Quest has been going for many years now, eight years, over eight years, and the maps we released um, seven years ago really don't live up to our current standards. Um, and to be honest, the maps we release now probably won't live up to our standards in five years, but that's another issue. So um, it's really hard not to just want to go around renovating old maps to make them look good now. Um, but we're going to try and concentrate on doing a good mix of renovating old maps and building new maps. Because if we just spend ourselves, spend our time going over everything we've done in the past, then, well, nothing will change. So yeah, that's it, been it from me. Um, expect some more commentated videos in the future with updates, maybe map tours, um, tutorials, not just from me, in fact, um, from all members of the community. Um, I believe LimeFox has a tutorial ready for release soon after this, so stay tuned for that. See ya.